We'll call the meeting of the Unfair Labor Board of School Board to order. Roll call. Here. 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 Approval of the agenda as presented. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, approval of minutes from November 22nd. Special and regular meeting. I'll second. I'll second that. <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Treasury's report, monthly financial report, and vulture review. Okay, cash balance uh, as of November 1st was $1,071,039.38. Uh, we had interest of $49.39 uh, along with receipts of $118,273.76 for a balance of $1,189,362.53. Uh, we had disbursements of $728,659.22 leaving a balance of $460,703.31 which is made up of account number one, the local government pool, $139,432.71. Account number two, the tech fund, $219,863.93. Account number three, the HVAC fund, $53,739.44. And general fund checking of $47,667.23. And then we had uh, vouchers. 36174 through 36301. acceptance of receipt of 2021-22 district financial statement. I'll just go through a little bit of it. We don't, if you have questions, you can call Dave, he'd love, he did an hour and a half for Kayla and I to go through. Um, or we got some list this year. Um, in your, the letters are the same as always in the front. Our grant would be new for you. There's two letters. There's two findings that our auditor always has for us, the fact of segregation of duties, because we're a small school, we only have limited staff doing the duties, but we do have safeguards in place to protect from that. And the other is that um, our auditors prepare our financial statements, but he even does it for Plymouth, unless you're a really big school like in Appleton and Milwaukee, the auditors do prepare them. But that's just considered a discrepant, a deficiency. So those are what your two letters say. Going through the book, you can always look through it. I'm just gonna point out a few pages that, because um, this has all the Gatsby language, so a lot of the beginning part of the book, it's not reported the way we would do it, but it's what they have to do for Gatsby, the government accounting procedures and then ours, the way we look at it, it's at the back. But page nine is just interesting. It just shows um, the charts, like the fact that our general aid, sparsity aid, and per pupil aid out of our entire budget, our revenues, that's 8%. So when they're saying how we get so much money, first, and people say that we get so much money from state aid, we get it, it's 8% that we get. We get more from operating grants and contributions at 10% than we do from our state aid. Um, and you can see the the biggest part, obviously, for fiscal expenses are going to be instruction, which is what you would like it to be. And our operations, maintenance, and remodeling is getting a bigger chunk lately just because we keep doing projects. Um, the next page, just to look at, um, just to look at page 31, one thing to point out that Dave was very impressed about was our short-term debt because we now use that line of credit and we've been adding to the fund balance. Last year, we just had to take out all we took out of the short-term debt was 170000 That was our short-term debt, and we only paid $179 in interest. So by being able to build up our fund balance, it saves us a lot 
of interest and does, allows us not to need to short-term borrow as much or use the line of credit. Page 50 is kind of a summary of what we already went through after the auditor was done. Dave gave us that long email about all the different components. Um, Dave again just said, this is like, this is our fund 10, just really good budgeting and it's harder to get any closer, he said, than what it is, just like he said on the last one. So you can see the federal sources and other sorts of parentheses, even when you're looking though at a budget that's as big as ours, you know, almost, you know, over 7.5 million, to be off by $14 in revenues, or 14,000 in revenues, the expenditures were pretty close. Um, or to be under, and then we're over in a few, and those are usually because of our projects. Um, he's just very impressed, so our, we, met, we spent less, we less needed that for when we got like for our transfers down below for the special ed, we saved to 82,000 because it was less than what we expected. And then we, the food service, we had said we were going to transfer funds there, but we didn't need to. The food service broke, almost broke even. So that was good. And down below, the reason we're 240 ahead is mostly saved in expenses, less than what we had budgeted for. But we've kind of gone through that and we did go through his whole report, but that's the page that would be reported the way we look at it. And then the next page, 51, is for the special ed. This is the fund 27. Um, for revenues, we took in a little more than expected. And then for total expenditures, we spent a little less than expected. Because we always put in that transportation and the special programs just in case we have a student that would need it. And then the next page, 52, these budgeting's a little bit, is quite a bit off, but this was the first time they moved all the student activity accounts into this account. So now the scholarships are moved into Fund 21, which is donations, scholarships, and activities. So Kayla has to try to budget to figure out how much student activity groups are going to take in each year and what they're going to spend. Well, it's really impossible almost to budget, and unless they get the money, they don't get to spend it. And scholarships, if we don't get it in, we don't spend it. Donations, if we don't get it in, we don't spend it. But this was the first year that happened. But this is our donations, our student activities, and our scholarships. And like our student activities, you can look, that was, you know, we thought um, it was 119,000 variable. You know, who knows that, because she wasn't planning that that was going to be in here, or the college scholarships. We didn't know what to put, Kayla didn't know what to put in there, and it was the first year of doing that. Um, just some that you could look through sometime, and we will go through this in January, go through all our grants. 59 is our federal grants we get in. Page 60 is our state aids that we'll get in, and we go through all these in January and go through all our different grants. And so it's either January or February. February, sorry. And that's about the highlights. So it's really nothing you didn't hear in the email. But if you look through and have any questions, feel free to give me a call. And if I can't answer it or feel up, then we can always put you in touch with Dave, and he would love to answer it. Any questions? And these are yours to keep. And we just need a motion. You don't approve this because you don't really have the None of us have the knowledge to approve it. You make a motion that we accept the auditor's financial report for the district. I'll second that. All right, any discussion at all? Discussion? All, right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, item D, donation, recognition, and accepting. Okay, these were in your board packet. I'm not in your packet, in your um, white folder. Um, the first part is our family assistance program, and actually every one of those should be starred by Mr. Ring, because they've all are repeat donors. Um, Frank and Nancy, Thielman, 25. Jeff and Ann, Boston, $1,000. A lot of these are for the Christmas meal we're giving them all, and for some of the gift cards and families. Um, and children's gifts, Larry and Terry Knowles, 100, Paul and Kathy Satori, 100, um, Rick and Peg Howe, 100, and then today, once when I just got this finished, then Robert and Marilyn Hamman did 50 for this also, so there was one additional. And then we also have very many, Debbie has quite a few donations that are coming in also, and people who are adopting families. I think we're making meals, Erica will find out tomorrow, I think. It was 25 or 26 and then another family joined later that they'll get meals for Christmas and then food for the week. And then they also get gifts and all the things from Grace Lutheran. 
So we'll get all those names and then we'll present them next month. So make sure everybody gets thanked. Um, Purveya donation to the athletic department. For any time anybody gets the physical through Purveya, using our trainers, anything, they're $20 a physical and they give it back to the district. So there's one student that did that. Sargento donation of 1,000 to the wrestling program to be used towards new uniforms. PTA donation of 500 towards safety patrol. Officer uh, Anemi requested money for something. Um, Cleveland State Bay donated 250 to the boys basketball program to offset the cost associated with the, associated with the December game at Heard Arena. And I did receive an email um, from Tim Schluter to let us know that Cleveland State Bay, because we hadn't heard anything about that donation, and his response was, you know, because it was more than what they originally budgeted, and he had to go to the board then, and he said that um, our recommendation to the board, because he's done, it's the end of the year, is to make the donation to cover the entire wish list of fitness equipment that was presented to us. This took some additional time on our end, as the list wish from the school was about 10,000 more than what we initially prepared for. Our team felt strongly that if we did anything, it had to meet the school's desires to ensure proper utilization and biggest impact. That means we are recommending to the board that the bank donate 30,000 to the district by year end, provided it is acceptable to the school district. I told him that would be absolutely acceptable. The board has already talked about it. And he was gonna get back to me, well, later that night he did email me um, to let me know the board approved the donation of 30,000 towards the fitness equipment. This is the easiest part of my job and the most fun. We're blessed to be able to do this and we truly wanna make a positive impact. And then he's gonna touch base with the next steps on how to do it. He was gonna get a hold of me last Friday, but then his day, he said, went crazy. I said, <laughs> I can relate, so you just tell us whenever you want us to pick up that check and we would be happy to do it. So that's very generous. And then um, those are the donations. And then we are applying for grants for childcare. I put this in there. This is part of their stabilization payment program. There's quite a bit of money out there for daycare and childcare because they're trying to help out those. There's two different grants. Um, and we'll have to see how long we keep doing one of them. The one for the workforce recruitment, we get $600 a month through June 20, 2022. But we have to look at the criteria because if it has to go into salaries to increase them by the state, if they have to get a certain increase every month, that might not work real well with other staff then. But if we can use it, we need to update some of our curriculum now that we have 3K kids in there with special needs. So if we can use it for that and set it aside for scholarships, because we'd love to get Lynn and Holly both certified to be directors, that would be a great asset. But if it has to go all, I mean, we're covered right now because we've given chamber cash and different things for the first months. We applied for the second, and we have calls and we're playing phone tag to see what it can be done. So that one may continue, it may not. The next one on the back side, though, that's the stabilization, which is for accessing, increasing access to high quality care. That's very similar to the grants we were getting last year. So this one will get 4,535, and it should stay pretty similar. It's based on the amount of kids you see, and ours are pretty stable throughout the year. And we should assume the same monthly amount through Jan July 2022. So that will be a big asset from you know, is that November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, you know, nine months, that will be very helpful to the childcare budget. So Diane and the ladies filled these out all on their own. They didn't need my help this time. They just didn't want to come to Rocky Knoll to fill it out with me, so. So, um, very generous donations again. I have not heard anything back from the Lions. I've coordinated talked with Kathy or emailed a few times, so we'll see about that with the, the track mm -hmm. project or the outdoor area. At least we saved enough otherwise from our science lab project to cover those costs, but we'll see. They might not have had a chance to talk with it, and tonight would actually be their meeting, so maybe it'll come up. But it's going through the president, so I'm not quite sure what process they're using. Mm -hmm. A motion to accept the donation. I'll make a motion to accept the donations with our thanks and gratitude, as always, for a very generous community. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, guest correspondence, public comment? There was no public comment. All right, written comment? I did just send you the one that really was correspondence to Jean and I, but they wanted you to be aware. First they said they wanted to come speak, but they said no, it's handled but still wanted to give it to you as an FYI. So that was just in your packet. And Erica, I had everybody's packets. You don't have to read those all, Erica. I did put a, a sample 
I, these were the emails that I collected from the staff. They were so appreciative of the chamber cash. I got a lot of them verbally. I might have missed an email or two in here, but at least this gives you the sentiment of it. But the bus drivers appreciate it. We did bus drivers, subs, um, and the staff, the teaching staff, and the, certif the certified staff, and the support staff. So they were very, very appreciative. It just didn't, because it only came a few days after St. Nick, too, so it was all taken care of. So sometimes it's not the amount, it's just the fact that they're thought of or know that you appreciate it. And this is now the second year in a row, so please know it meant a lot to them, to all of us. And then there were some other unrelated to um, the, the board gifts in this area that those cards I gave to you, Erica. Um, we have a card from um, Tim Wagner for the 25 year plaque and chamber cash from recognition for her um, yeah, 20 year, 20 year anniversary. Yeah. That's why it's when, yeah. year plaque. when you get 25, 30, 35, you get a plaque, and then we give you chamber or a resort or cash bucks to use for the outdoors outfitters for every year that you work here. Um, and then one from Linda Martin for her retirement party and gifts, and one from Dr. Corneen for the plant. And that would be it for written comments. I guess one thing just put written, because you did get forward, does anybody else have an interest in going to the school board convention before I forget to ask? Because the beginning of January, well, you didn't pick Sarah, I didn't know where you were. Jill thought you would. Yeah. Anyone else? And it's fine. I don't think I'm going this year either. Usually I do, but okay. I'll double check with Sarah Rennick. I'm sure Jim's not going, but I'll check with Sarah. The deadline is the first week of January to register, so thank you. All right. Item 7, maintenance building project updates. Just a couple updates. Um, long jump pit. Uh, Dad's excavating day is going to finish. Drainage this week. Weather's good. He's got all the pipe and catch basin, so we should be able to finish up this week. And I called on the glass for the door, and the Hancock company is bringing all that too. So call him a little bit. Those are the two maintenance that we're waiting on yet. And then the other one in B there is the washer. We currently have two washers, industrial washers, down in the laundry room. One hasn't been used in two or three years because the bearing has gone out. We've been using one, which is 38, 40 years old, which is a, a milner. Uh, it, that bearing has also gone out. Uh, it's kind of noisy. And so I went and got prices from two vendors. is a very industrial and it actually has a oil bearing where the other ones do not have an oil bearing. Um, the top two from uh, 3C Okay, because then you have to correct, because on when we talked, you were going, I said you were recommending 3B, which is the 62-pound one, though. Yeah, I said I put a 62-pound one in there just, okay. just in case. But, yeah, the 45-pound is the one I'm recommending. Okay, because that changed from this. So just so they know, it would be 3A you're now recommending, not 3B. You 
said it included the electrical. Yeah. And you yeah. said the one you have the um, fire department is 15 years old or 13 years old? Uh, I think it's 11, 11 or 12 years old since the fire department's been. Yeah. 2009. Yeah. yeah. So. So you would just get one, not two? Correct. Fine. We used to have more because we used to have fire ed class and you did all your fire ed clothes and you we did all that and the towels so from doing yeah. showers from and showers, now everybody's. Yeah. We haven't done that for like 15 years, you know, to wash the towels. So now it's really athletics and culinary. Yeah. And then our wash, you know. Sure. So maybe right. a buck a week for, you know, mops and stuff like that. Um, it does not have, you know, these other ones do not have a sealed bearing. I mean, they have to have one way and they spin a little slower. And they, they do service out of West Bend and Oshkosh, so. Yeah, we, it's been about the last five years we've been, it's starting to nickel and dime us that it's not. And, and if you don't I've shut it just right. Three service calls already on that one. Yeah, if you don't shut it right, you flood the bottom. As somebody's done laundry a few times and flooded the rooms, you think you have it closed, right? Bill has it, the technique down, but now that Bill's not around all the time. You have to be very careful, so it's time. So the recommendation is 3A. 3A. I'll make a motion that we purchase the uh, the 3A 45 pound um, wash machine, the Waz Comat 45 pound. It's about two weeks out, you said. No, that's not bad. Yeah. Yeah, that's not bad at all. No. <laughs> that's right, that's <laughs> Some washing machines are up three, one, six months and yeah. more and more. Any discussion at all? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? All right. Thank you. Any questions for me? Great holiday. Thank, Thank you. you too, Fuzzy. Thanks, Fuzzy. Can get to the firehouse now. Christmas party. Yep. <laughs> I wasn't going to bring that up. But <laughs> it was nice you thought that to come here. Thank you, Fuzzy. So you got nothing for item A but approval early graduation requests? Yep, we just wanted to keep that in for next year, then that stays on the agenda. All right, approval high school course offerings, number five. That'd be Ryan. Can you put the changes on the front of the catalog he sent to you in your packets? Uh, really just some, some minor changes on that first part, uh, class additions and revisions. Mrs. Rail uh, had to make some changes in her class offerings. Um, she had offered family consumer science courses, but that is uh, no longer going to be offered by LTC. She'll be working with LTC. Uh, she's going to be offering an introduction to hospitality business and team building and problem solving, which I think are two really good choices. Um, the introduction to hospitality business is really a business course, and I think if we do have a hole in terms of just business courses, um, I, I think that would be a nice class for a number of our students who are looking to get into, um, or at least get introduction to a first level, low level of business course. Um, we decided to offer leadership every other year in large animal science every year to assist with the class numbers. Um, one exciting offering is that uh, physical education will be adding yoga for college credit. Um, and we really wanted to add that because we think it could hit a number, another part of our student population. Currently, uh, we offer um, lifetime fitness or phys uh, uh, lifetime activities and jogging. Well, you take away some of your population that wants to take those classes that don't want to run two miles or three miles every day. So adding yoga, it's not just yoga, it would also be with mental wellness, um, stress, uh, uh, different strategies for relieving stress. So really hit a number of our district goals as well. So Mr. Larson was working on developing that class, uh, but we will offer that in the fall. We already have a number of people that are upset it wasn't offered this year. Um, and then due to uh, distance learning courses, uh, economics and business will longer be offered. Uh, and then Mrs. Lanier just put a statement that we're changing the wording on there. Uh, because so many opportunities are out there um, just for a change in our course catalog with that. Any questions on, on those additions or revisions or course offerings? Uh, the first part on the bottom is Computer Apps 2 is now going to be called Multimedia Design. We kind of thought that uh, sometimes Computer Apps doesn't it may leave a sour taste in some students' mouth, and we really wanted to make sure that was away from that class. They, they look at a total different um, element of concepts in terms of what they do in that class. So 
we change the name, that would be good. Um, and then uh, some culinary changes of combining some to meet some of the standards in the industry. Um, an update on the UW Oshkosh CAP criteria that goes along with what that university is doing. Um, a renewal of an option for students to take AP Bio for CAP credit. And then just some changes as staff names and also um, Sheboygan County, Inspire Sheboygan County is now going to be Inspire Wisconsin. Um, and then just to add, I know we have some captains in this. We are currently working with UW Green Bay uh, to maybe create some opportunities or answer some questions that we have. Um, in 2023, um, that is when the, the higher level, I guess, board uh, that oversees college classes, that's their kind of due date of making sure that anyone that teaches a CAP class must have a master's in that area. Um, obviously, we do have some teachers that teach CAP now that do not have a master's, so working with Green Bay have some alternatives that we can do. We're not the only school facing that same. There's a number of them, um, especially with, you see, a large portion of your um, teaching staff retiring and younger teachers coming that may not have master's. So Green Bay has started a program to work with those schools, and Ms. Betty and myself are currently in the beginning stages. They're reviewing everything that we offer and looking for some ways they can help us help. And that was an issue too with some of our older staff, like Mrs. Lund had her master's in educational leadership. Well, she was in English, but it wasn't where at those times you didn't get a master's in English when you got it in. There weren't too many masters to get, so she could work it through because then those times she had enough experience so they could use experience. Or you might have a history, but you don't have necessarily a separate master's in, in sociology and a separate master's in psychology. So they want you to have it in that specific area that you are teaching. So, yeah, yeah it makes sense. Kind of, I mean, then you're talking some of the people need four or five masters, so they're trying right. to get credit for the experience you have. But every school district is, is going through this. Any questions on course offerings for next year? Hmm. Just okay. the what's the removal of the AP Biology course? Uh, it's our CAP edition. Okay. So they can get the AP credits, they yeah. They can get the AP credit, but it's for CAP. Oh, and okay. That actually hasn't been the case for a number of years. It just was Got you. Know, Gotcha. Yeah, we couldn't offer that even when Mr. Moore was here yeah. today. They could take the test for AP, and depending on what they score, obviously they could get college credit depending on where they're going, but it was not for CAP. Though. Yeah, I know I read that too, and I thought we've never given no. it for CAP no. that no. I was so aware of because Mr. Some... Moore didn't have his master's yeah. either in that area. Do you have to approve that or no? Yeah, you need to approve the course, CAP. Right. So you have a motion to approve that? I'd like a motion to approve that. Any discussion on okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> All right, Sheboygan County School Closure Guidelines. Okay. I just present this every year that um, this is a windshield chart that we use in the county to determine if we're going to have school or not. Obviously, when it gets to the yellow, and you have to look at the wind, and you also have to look at the temperature. So usually it's when it gets to the minus 30s is when we look at school closures. Um, and then when it comes to snow days, Actually, by 3.30, we're up at 3.45. There's always webinars with the state that you're on. That's my big thing with retirement. I can't wait for the first snowstorm to roll over and say, yeah, it's snowing, <laughs> and roll back over. And I think, okay. And then the, all the Schwain County soups start talking. Um, but then I also talk to the fellow at the county shed. He lets me call him already at 3.30 to see, because they're the ones out on the roads. Right. They know better. And they won't tell us whether or not to have school, but some of them say, and, you know, an extra two hours would really be helpful to – to get it and then Judy we use the bus company and they call also the county sheriff and the other ones and then we talk to all the other schools so what we try to have at least have the decision made by 4 30 quarter to 5 so we can start letting people know by 5 o'clock because daycare if we close they close at 6 so parents need to to know that I know they're not thrilled about getting the calls necessarily at 5 30 in the morning but if you wait too long it's also an inconvenience um, so a lot of thought does go into it, and you know, you're darned if you do and darned if you don't, but we always tell people if they don't think it's safe, they shouldn't send their kids. And it's ironic, whenever it's a cold day, it's the one who lives across the street that doesn't send them, you know, it's not the ones that are on the bus for 45 minutes, it's just how it goes. Um, then as far as right now, as if we would do virtual learning days in place of snow days, I guess it would be like a polar vortex where you knew it was coming, or we knew there was a major snowstorm, so you could tell the kids the day before, because our elementary, and you know, up to fifth grade, don't take home their devices. So you'd want to make sure kids took it home, had it. Then I think if there's prior notice, they do it. But if it's a snow day and it happens during the night, you know what, there's nothing wrong with a snow day. And especially now, people need a snow day. 
and it's okay to go outside and play, and it's okay for teachers to have the day off, and we have it scheduled to make up, and if we have enough hours. So I guess my philosophy would be advance notice, okay, we have snow, then we're gonna make them up. But if it's an act of God and it comes, then you know what, it's okay to have a day off, especially in a year like last year and this year. That was our philosophy yet last year, and I guess I'd like to keep that philosophy this year if the board's agreeable. I see you all nodding. Yeah, thanks. Okay, I think there's absolutely nothing wrong with having a snow day. And we make sure we have our hours and our kids are doing well, so. And the staff can use the break too. All right, item 11, school accountability and educational options notice, report card update. Okay, you need to um, put these out at state law and we have to put it on our website, the school accountability. The legislature passed another law this year. So with the school accountability, you would notice on the second page, we have to give all the other options we have, like open enrollment on the back side. Well, I'm talking about this one first, the school accountability, the one page. You have to show that you have youth apprenticeship. So that's really the only change about our options. But on here, um, you have to talk about your report card. And I did that comparing how, you know, we've had the exceeds, significantly exceeds at the elementary and meets or exceeds at the high school and um, district, and then just compares ours with the districts and other places. I did change the graph on the top to the rating category because actually some of the scores they reduced. So some people actually got in different categories this year because they did lower some of them, um, but because they changed the way they're rating. So this is what you would have to approve um, because this is um, what's going to go into, or it is already on our website, and by law this has to be in by December 31st on our website. So that's just a requirement. And then as far as the report cards, I said I would come back to that this year, or this year, this month, um, I pulled out your, your report cards were in your folder. Um, so really what I did, and what I think I'll have you do, and then you can look at to see this explanation I found is probably the best to explain what all the different categories are. And they're really different for every, um, the district as opposed to the high school as opposed to the elementary middle. Because the more kids you have, usually the better you'll end up scoring because you have more opportunity for growth. Like the high school, when you look, the amount of kids they have, if you have a lower class, it's gonna take you only have 134 kids to make a difference, where with the elementary middle school, or you have 314 as opposed to 142. We usually do really well at the elementary middle school because you're using from junior kindergarten, well, they don't grade the junior kindergarten, through eighth grade. So you can see growth. You can see all those things. And the thing is at the high school, when they have categories of less than 20, they don't break them out and they don't use those for comparison purposes. Well, at the high school, our special ed, our economically disadvantaged, our EL, and even down at the other school, they don't get counted, or at least for the comparisons, because it's not a big enough cell size, you have to have at least 20. And when they talk about target areas and growth, they're using your lowest 25% and comparing it to your other school. When you use 25% of the high school, you know, that's a big part of the number that you're comparing to the outside of the middle school, you have a bigger variety to look at. Um, so what they basically do out of the report card, and this one page kind of explains it really well, what's new for it. Um, really, they have the question on there. You could write your district blurb. But they're really doing target group outcomes priority, and they did a lot of weighting this year and adjusting it different because they didn't give tests last year. So they're based on three years, but it's really four years because there was no testing last year. And then you can tell for every area, they use that based upon how many students you have in the different categories, so the weights are not the same going across the different grade levels. So your summary score is on there, but you know priority, if you look for the elementary, the priority or the district, um, achievement was 79.3%. When you did the elementary middle school, it was 82%, at the high school it's 74%. So, they have this formula, so it changes, and for every district, it's going to be different because they base it upon your amount of free and reduced or your amount of economically disadvantaged. They give different weights to different categories. So every school, it's really hard to compare apples to apples because everyone's going to have a different breakdown as to these categories. So it's going to be interesting yet to still figure out how we're going to present this to the parents in a way that's understandable. I'm sure I'll put this report card at a glance with it, because they do explain at least what the different categories mean. 
But I think instead of sending this whole pack, one thing that is, I think, that parents would like to know is like if you look at the achievement and you turn to that page, it tells you this district score was the same or higher than 92.1 of the districts in the state. That I think they can relate to. So we could write that in each one of these and give like the front page. And then the high school, I added this year and it has nothing to do with your score, it's just more for information. So they talk about adding it, but if you look at the last two pages, pages like eight and nine at the high school, they're talking about how many advanced courses um, you offer. Um, like we have 20% of our kids are involved and 19% at the state. Dual enrollment, we have 39% doing dual enrollment where the state has 18%. And we do do really well with dual enrollment and our kids getting college credit. In industry certification, the state is 1.4. We have almost 15% getting industry certifications. In work base, we have 9% as opposed to 2.4. So this is part of our preparation for secondary, so our district is doing well, but none of this counts towards your report card. It's just extra information. And then on the back, when they talk about courses, you know, art design, we do well on that, but we don't offer a course in dance, and we don't offer a course in theater. You know, we have our kids involved, but we don't do courses yet. Our music, Obviously, with our band program, you know, has a, over a third of our students doing it. So, it's just extra information they added in this year to give credit for it, or give acknowledgement of it, but it doesn't go towards your report card. And then for those of you who really like to go through data, Grant, I have this 21-page document. Actually, it is kind of interesting, but if I go through it all now, you'll look at me even more glassy-eyed than what you are. But if you look at this and you have questions, please just call. And I thought, well, I wasn't just going to give it to Grant because some of the others <laughs> might want to. Sarah, you might want to really dig into this and see. Um, well, it is interesting. Look, I noticed like from the elementary, and that's why you're working on our math exceeds and there's growth and it's all over three. Our English and language arts is not as much growth. And that's exactly what we've noticed by going through the data. So it does confirm what you've already found out looking your data retreats. So our report card did confirm that. So that's why the elementary and that and the middle school areas are looking at the English language arts and so are they at the high school. Our math has good growth in it. But too, sometimes the higher you score, it's harder to have the growth component. They say they don't penalize for you, but then it becomes a smaller part of your pie and the other parts get bigger. That's why every district, Kohler's pie would look much different than our pie. And our pie looks a lot different than Sheboygan's pie on how much program, because they would have much more free and reduced lunch than we do. And Kohler would have even less than we do. So the factors are not given equal weight in every district. So it's going to be interesting to figure out how to communicate that to our parents, because we will have to give report cards to our parents. Um, and we'll just do a more general. And what they're really stressing to this year, it's really hard to make. You can't compare this to other report cards, because it's all done differently. And after a pandemic year, some districts didn't do as well, but that's why they're figuring different and the ratings changed. Ours were pretty similar to where they'd always been. And our high school one is gonna fluctuate just because of the small numbers that take the tests. You're gonna have really stellar academic classes and you're gonna have some that have more special ed or more EL or people that aren't as academically based as others. So ours can jump around a lot. So. It's a good, it gives you information, but you really can't weigh a school necessarily just by the report card. It's a one piece, you know, it's based on a one series of tests mm -hmm. and then your graduation and your attendance. So it's, it, it can give you some information, but you have to look at everything the district does. So I would guess for most of you, if you look at this and this, the one page sheet, oh, these are backsided. That will tell you all you really want to know, or right? you should be able to understand, and this will probably send along to parents. For those of you who really want to know more, Sarah and Grant, here you go. Any questions on that? I know it was very fast, but I figure if you want to know, you'll look if you have questions asked. And for some of you, you already know as much as you'd like to know. Any questions? All right, and 12, update overview of the return to school plan. Um, right now, we're not looking to make any changes to our return to school plan. Um, our numbers, we've been fortunate, have been pretty stable. We do have positive cases, but like this week, we have two positive, but, and we have 10 that are out with close contact, but they're household close contacts. So we do right now don't have any school close contacts. 
I know um, a school around us right now, they put everybody back on masks because they found one test on a team. So they tested the whole team and the majority of them tested positive, but they were mostly asymptomatic. So it's really hard to know how much is really around because there is quite a bit that can be asymptomatic, but you can only do with what you know. So, so far, we haven't seen as much into our school buildings um, as other places. It could be the measures we have, it could be just um, you know, they're spaced out more, our staff's doing a good job, and just, who knows. But I know they're really worried after Christmas break, so we'll see in your packets. I did share, um, you had our numbers, so our numbers though in our, our district were up. They are growing, it was 15 in our district, and actually two of the cases we had that were positive were not, would not be on this report, because they were open enrolled. So last week our count though in the county, or in our district, was higher with 15. We hadn't had any up to 15 so far in one week. Um, the numbers, like in the other chart that I gave you for kids, especially for positives, are higher than what they've ever been, especially for the zero to nine. So it's more informative for you. And then I put into some, there is something that just came out from Wisconsin, from the CDC. You might have had the test to return. For some, a lot of school districts won't make a difference because it's only the test to return for school-based close contacts. And a lot of districts aren't doing school-based close contacts. We are, so that would give us an option if there's school-based, but like this week, none of ours are school-based that are out. Because household, they still want you to keep home because they figure you have much more exposure. This would be school-based, the CDC did it. Just came out with it two days ago. Um, the Department of Wisconsin Health will now look at it and they'll make criteria and then they'll get it to us. They're hoping they'll get us to it by January and then we can decide, odds are if this is what our county is recommending, we will do that also because if the kids can now that we have testing available at Plymouth and they now are testing it seems um, I was on a meeting with the Sheboygan County Soup State Dan is saying they do a test every six minutes all day long there's just cars going but it's good I mean, that's you have it so it's good that it's mm -hmm. getting used and anybody it's not just school people anybody in the community can also use it so now that we have a source to get testing and get your results you know you can use that data and use the facility. And which test is it? Is it the? You get the antigen that day, but they follow all of them up with a PCI. Okay. And so far they seem to match it up pretty well. You know, there's a rare occasion where it doesn't, mm -hmm. but the majority are matching up. So you get the antigen. Well, it used to be about 15 minutes. Now it's taking a little longer. Um, and then it's two to three days for okay. the PCR to come out. And they send Jean and Ryan and I get the results. But the parents do, but we can verify what they're mm -hmm. telling us. They come in usually late that day or early in the morning the following day. And then there was just um, mitigation from Jill Underly, the superintendent of schools for Wisconsin. She'd like everybody, of course, to be masked and be vaccinated. Um, so that was just sent out today. And then actually today also, um, Wisconsin Department of Health and Human Services sent out an advisory and anticipated surge in COVID-19 disease activity due to the variant and the holidays. So these are more just FYIs. So we'll just have to wait and see. Last year, it wasn't an issue. People were very responsible over the holidays. We'll see, it does seem that there is a lot more spread around the younger population, I mean in the 30s and 40s, as opposed to you know old people like me um, that are getting it. And it is, we're seeing it more in kids. Luckily, the kids aren't getting has severe, but I know the report this week said in our area, 96% of the hospital beds and 97% of the um, ICU. ICU beds are used. And I know they started stopping some of the elective surgeries. And so just stay tuned. So hopefully we don't have to do anything different. You will see though, I am gonna have to redo the plan not what's in the plan, but for the ESSER 3, you have to follow a very prescriptive format and you have to get it put online. It's part of the requirements from the federal government. So I'm gonna have to take our plan and put it in this format. And if there's something I need to add to what we do, I'll be bringing it in in January. I just didn't have a chance to, to do that yet. But there's very prescriptive things we need to do with ESSER. A lot of hoops to go through for the ESSER 3 money. All right. Item 13, uh, acceptance of personal approval resignations, support staff, high school secretary. Um, we are recommending Tiffany Faber. She's a mother in our district. Um, 
we did have another candidate too, but decided to stay at our home district. Um, so we thought Tiffany was a real strong candidate. Ryan had me sit in on him, but Ryan was doing the interviews with Roxy. Ryan, you want to add about Tiffany and the recommendation? I, I, I definitely think you know, she's a strong candidate. She's an addition to our school culture and obviously the office. Um, she, she interviewed very well. She came out very personable, so I think she'll bring some, some good some good energy to, to the building, and um, we'll hopefully it's going to be up. Yeah. I mean, the learning curve is high, but we'll have Roxy in January. The first few weeks, she'll work you know, three days with Roxy or so for the first two and the last two weeks, and they'll both work the full time together because she's going to have to put in some time at her other job to start out. She is a first responder, so she was nervous about that if there was a call. And I said, well, you know, if you're the only one in the office, no, you can't go. <laughs> but if there is, yeah, just like our firemen, we let go because if we were having an issue, we'd like people to come to our school. But that'll be a real asset because Roxy was in charge of also the first aid for the district. So that's something she brings. Um, so she'll have Roxy to train her. She'll have Diane will be a great resource at the other school, which we already had talked about. So I think she'll blend in. It seems to be that a lot. It takes a lot to bother her. References turned out real well. There was one reference we were questionable, but um, Mr. Mewson turned out okay. We, we gave him a little weight. But, um, but that was the good for the first responder part. So And she can tell she has a variety of experiences and like an office worker working with personnel or people in the public. And a big part of being a secretary is also being able to work with the public. You're the first face they see when they walk in the district. Mm -hmm. And you want it to be a positive experience. So we, we have that recommendation for Tiffany for the secretary. In motion. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. All right, co-curricular co resignation acceptance, high school athletic director. I was very sad to get this letter, but I was not totally surprised. We've, Bart's been dealing with this the last few years. I mean, 18 years is actually a long time for district, and I mean for an athletic director. They tend to burn out for everybody, and the more athletics you get, and there's nothing as important as athlete and for athletics to some of the parents and it's just time for so he wanted to give us plenty of time to think about what we might do how we might handle it we have a few ideas um, depending on to work it into somebody else's position he will help train them it's just taking a toll on him and the last two years of COVID have not been easy years to be an athletic director um, so we are very appreciative Bart did a fantastic job for us for 18 years and I mean, we would have loved to have them do it to the retirement, but we can certainly understand that there comes a time, and it's time for Bart. And we're just glad that he's gave us a lot of notice and that he's willing to work with whoever, and Ryan has time to come up with a plan, or we'll come up with something. We'll try to have it before I, I go, or else, oh, that'll be Ryan's issue, no. <laughs> so, um, but Bart just did a fantastic job. And his letter, I said, he almost made me cry with his letter. But everything almost makes me cry. Like, it must be the pain pills or something. But I know he's very helpful. And he would do, he wants to still do whatever he can do to help the district. But that's also why Bart wanted to do another class on that. He said, now I'll have time to do that. I wanted to do this class for so long, but I never had the time to put together another class. So, so we regretfully recommend that you approve his resignation. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? All right, certified staff, increased speech therapist to 100% FTE. Yeah, I told Marky, I think she must be testing these kids to qualify for a speech. But no, um, we went from 40 to 60, or we went from 60 to 80, because we knew it should have been 80 all the while, but Amy Schmidt only wanted to work the three. Well, I had Debbie, when Debbie said, I think she needs to go to 100%, and she started explaining to me what had to go to her course role, and I said, well, started and just write a rationale so I can share it with the board. So I think when you look at this rationale, um, she has more than a full-time load. So we very definitely recommend the 100% FTE. I'll make a motion to increase our speech therapist to 100%. Okay. Any discussion? 
All in favor? Aye. Opposed? All right, item 14, update on district administrative search process, plan for a special meeting, 6 p.m. January 17th. Okay, Joe, because when we met um, with Joe and um, Sarah, and you couldn't make it that day, then Mike. Yep, you had some You're lucky I wasn't there. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I remember now. <laughs> oh, he was, yeah. He was one of our, yeah. Um, so we met with Joe, and we just explained his timeline was a little bit aggressive with trying to get all the focus groups in and the surveys, and we want to make sure people had a chance. So he, in this packet, is the new timeline. So he really didn't, they won't have the profile until, because the surveys are open now until December 22nd. And all the focus groups are in. I think the only person he still needed to interview was Jim, because they've connected a few times, but then Jim's not Twitter, but they'll get it done. And then he will come up with the profile. Um, he and I worked together and got the um, job description or the application that I put in here, the advertisement. So that's in, it's been posted, it's been on there for a while. And actually last time I talked to him, I think he had nine candidates already. And he said, you know, that was after it had been on a week. So he knows we'll have more. And then when he gets together, he can go through if you, if you agree with the profile. And he's been very impressed with the focus groups. He said people have been very willing to participate, to give their thoughts. They're a little nervous about a change. Um, but they understand and they're afraid too that you know we'll get somebody but will they stay and then that's up to the board to make sure they stay they have the, that you know they develop the relationship and to do that and um, you never know with anyone but he will share all that but what I thought you might like to see who we had representative in the different focus groups and um, if the ones if they were recommended and they weren't able to do it like Jenny he called her then has a phone interview and like I asked Lou Gentine and he couldn't but he sent me he texted me some thoughts so I just passed him along to Joe so the principals and I contacted everybody and we tried to get like open enrollment non open enrollment old families new families um, a whole variety and then representative at different levels um, and Debbie did too so we just made the contacts and then um, and we had a group of students that also met with Joe and Joe was actually kind of impressed that they actually knew what the superintendent did or different things um, and but I didn't go to any of them and the principals went to their one but other than that it was just these people that were there and Joe and his wife Barb came and she took notes when they were doing it I think the groups usually were an hour maybe a little more than an hour but he was very impressed that he said it was amazing that how much knowledge they did have of the district so he will share that all with you so we will have the special meeting at 6 o'clock in January and then our regular board meeting at 7 but then he'll go through the profile with you and share what he heard from the focus groups and where he's at. Okay, any questions on that? And I know out of him, he's had a couple that have experience apply and some that don't. So we'll see, or you'll see. Right. I am, I'm not sure. I, I may have to travel some for a week in February, but. Oh, is that when February, that's when we're looking at. Interviews. And Joe, if you find out that is, because we tried to avoid when you were, everybody was giving their vacations and when they wouldn't be here. So I know we, we avoided all those dates. Well, I thought it was going to be the first week of February, and now it's not. Oh, okay. I don't, well, I don't know that. I don't know when it's Well, and by then, you know, in January, if you know, there might be flexibility. That's when you're all here together, and then people can compare calendars. You know, none of this yeah. is stone. It is. He said he would let me know as soon as he knew. Yeah. That it, you know, can be. Some can probably be adjusted. Okay. All right, item 15, proposed change for the March board meeting. March, would it be, would people be agreeable to move it from the 21st to the 14th? I had a place on the 14th and they moved it to the 21st. <laughs> Fine with me. Does that work with everybody? Yeah. Okay, so the, I will, um, we'll mark in the minutes that and we'll, Obviously, we posting at that March board meeting will get changed to March 14th from the 21st. You might not get your financials till that night because we may not, Kayla may not have a chance to get them to you by that Wednesday, but we can go through them. Okay. All right, item 16, student council activities report. Right, Ryan, you'll probably do that. I'll just do that in mind. All right. So She's uh, in playing in pep band right now. All right. Item 17, grade JK through eight activities report. Sure. <laughs> 
first two items I have involve both elementary and middle school, and one of those being our conferences. Our elementary school had a 96% participation rate with parents, and middle school had 92. And we do reach out to parents to schedule and invite them in. If parents could not make it in person, of course, we offered a virtual meeting option. Something fun and new is Lemons of Love. Lemons of Love reached out to us to have create happy drawings that will go part of chemo care packages to children and adults. Um, so we're pushing that. Uh, both of Mrs. Hamas is sending some information home for those students who really want to be aware. Happy drawing over your holiday break might capture um, a picture, and I'm going to deliver those to the organization. So I'm looking forward to that. So JK, we had two winter performances. Um, thank you for those who were able to fit in your schedule to attend. It was a lot of fun. It was my first to see what it was like, and Holly and I met a lot to go over logistics and spacing and just be smart about it, and I, I think it turned out incredibly well. It was, it was really a good time to be had. Um, and then we also had a junior, or thank you to Holly and teachers for their help. We had a junior kindergarten 100% participation with the cookie decorating. That was a big deal. I think people were excited to get out of the home and decorate some cookies. Um, and then we have a school-wide sing-along under the direction of Mrs. Green with our fourth graders taking the lead virtually and we'll be singing some tunes together as a whole school. And then um, many of our elementary teachers will be participating in the Green Bay Packer Hall of Fame Tundra Tale Reading Program. That's to motivate kids to read at home so many hours of reading and when you track that. Um, we would like to sign up as a school and then motivate each other to do that, so we'll be looking forward to that. And a huge thank you to our PTA. Um, out of respect for COVID and the social piece that did not take place after the winter conference or performance, they did provide uh, cookie treats for every single student plus middle school. Um, so that was really appreciated by our PTA. Um, middle school, it's a big deal. Um, our goal by tomorrow at 2.45 is to acquire 2022 red resort away tickets. Um, we met as a school culture PLC and we said, you know, um, there's a heightened level of, I kind of want to do what I want to do. Um, among, among many students, and we thought, talked about, let's stop maybe correcting and promote the positive. So we're really focusing on positive verbs, actions, acts of kindness, and not just the teachers, because one student said, yeah, well, I get a red ticket because I was complimenting my teacher about her nice shirt. I said, well, no, who's beyond that? <laughs> but there's, there is a more positive feel it was a seven day challenge, and we were at 2006 tickets before today. And PTA is gonna help us with the fun treats on Wednesday morning. Um, we'll hit our goal, which is exciting, and then I'd like to extend it to elementary and see if the elementary can outdo the middle school's total. Because we're not gonna stop at 20,000 or 2022 and then, like nothing happened. I mean, I expect it to continue, so we'll have fun with it. It'll be a really good time, but I'm proud of them. And a huge thank you to Kelly Flagg, who was cutting a lot of tickets. <laughs> um, we made a big effort. Um, and then congratulations to our November students of the month, grade five, Morgan Adams, grade six, Addison Spatz, grade seven, Alexa Van Groh, grade eight, Joseph Kalbachen. And then our boys basketball team opened up last Thursday against Kohler. And then we have a home game. I have down Tuesday against Ozaki, but I also saw Oostburg listed, so I'm not quite sure. It begins with an O, but we'll find out. <laughs> So it is. And, and we're really it's Ozaki. Thank you. I have Ozaki back. Um, in terms of players, we are short 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. We're having to move some 6th graders, and wish I had more 8th graders out. I'll be totally honest. There's a couple that are very talented that could really help us out, but we'll use who we have. So I'm grateful for that. Thank you. Great. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Yes, thank you. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Thank you. Happy holidays to all of you. I'll just stay. Is that okay? okay. Yeah, and actually, um, after I'm going to quick say, Jean, I'd like you to stay after two. We just have come one thing I want to update the board on, and I don't know if you're aware of it. So, Sarah, after the meeting, we'll have to have you leave right away. You can wait outside if you need some answers, but we have one quick thing we just want to update the board on, okay? Don't mean to be rude, but you got to go right after this time, and then we'll take care of you out in the hallway. But, Jean, I'd like you to stay, too, sure. just so we can update everybody. All right, at the high school. Um, our student council is and will be organizing our Christmas um, holiday week. If you walk by Kelly Library, you saw the windows being decorated. So uh, things like dress-up days, as I said, window decorating, uh, gift basket, and then all gift baskets. And also on Wednesday at two o'clock, we'll do some holiday activities. Um, we, we are going to do uh, all eight periods, usually the afternoon. Uh, the morning is usually community service day, and then we usually have our school potluck. But obviously with COVID, we I, I, I didn't feel comfortable sending kids all over. County and ringing bells, so made the decision not to do that this year. And then 
Um, our gym floor is being redone. So when they were gonna have a pep rally and a student assembly, this year no fun fair has decided that we're having all eight periods. <laughs> and at two o'clock, we are going to do some holiday activities. So That's where that keep, name I'm came just from. Okay. Going with the flow. <laughs> Anytime I can take that fun away from our student body, I guess that's what we're going to do. Though. I mean, all seriousness, uh, trying to do the best job we can with their circumstances, so they will be very appreciated. But I'll just tell them they're going to be very appreciated. Um, student Council will also be sponsoring a blood drive when we come back from break. Um, that will be on Wednesday, January 6th. I might have my days mixed up. That might be the 5th uh, from 11 to 4, and that's done right here um, in the library. Uh, Mr. Yasko and Ms. Turner um, are getting ready to host a poetry out loud competition. Uh, that will happen, I believe, January 13th um, here in the library as well. We'll get more uh, details on how we're going to do that here and make sure that it's safe and obviously socially distanced. Um, in early December, Mr. Yasko and Ms. Turner took about eight students to the UW-Whitewater Writing Conference where students were able to visit a college campus, but more importantly, they were able to get feed, uh, feedback on their, uh, on their writing. Um, FBLA is finalizing dates for our Coaches vs. Cancer game. Um, right now, we're tentatively looking at doing the girls' game on February 10th and the boys' game on February 11th. For those of you that attend that before, we team up with Pink Heels, um, do a number of different um, events to raise money to that organization. All the money stays right here in Sheboygan County. Uh, just a great organization. We have a pretty strong relation with them. I think for the past five years, we have teamed up with them. So we're going to try to continue. Last year, we took the hiatus off. This year, we're going to do it again. Um, on Wednesday, December 15th, our students... Our students worked on their college and career readiness, ACP materials. Um, seniors worked on lessons on entrepreneurial skills and creating a work-life balance. Um, they also had time to work on their portfolios and their pathway interviews. Uh, juniors met with Mr. Schmidt for science ACT prep work. Sophomores discussed the YA program. Um, and then freshmen uh, did lessons on taking notes and test-taking strategies. Um, and as you can tell by the, the sound in the background, our winter sports are off and running in everything. So that is at the high school. Any questions? All right. Thank you. Item 19, Collective Administrative Goals Update. Um, basically, on the Collective Goals, we talked about with the report cards. We really haven't had an in-service. I know you continue to work on your other goals, the resilience and things like that, and your PLCs. The one thing we will come, like I said, and start focusing on the SR3. Though some of our funding, it's really hard to do the SR3 right now. There's certain requirements, but we have no idea how much funding we're getting because if you're I don't know if you, I guess I pay attention to it, but you may not. The federal government approved 90% of the grant for our ESSER money, not the 10% that the legislature tied to in-school performance and not, because they said, no, you're supposed to be helping the other ones, and they suspect it when they sent it in, it wasn't going to be approved. So that's the 10% but that's dangling that we're part of. So we have no idea yet what we're going to get. So it could be... 60,000, it could be 400,000. It could be 100, you just don't know. So that, and if they don't get together, the legislature and the DPI, we could lose that 10%. So we may be greatly affected by that. So it makes it a little hard, but we'll at least get the application and the beginning parts of it in. Um, just on a little note, last Wednesday, though, did, I want to compliment Debbie Hammond, arranged, and Ryan and Jean did a good job. Jean brought thousands of cream puffs and eclairs. Um, we had the retiree and the staff holiday brunch and it was just nice to see everybody I mean they were being socially appropriate and doing that but and some didn't come because they just were being very cautious but it was great to have that back again and and see everybody it was a really nice morning um, and now uh, tomorrow will be a busy day just preparing getting the stuff all together for our family so that everybody can have a really nice Christmas and everybody will have a Christmas in our district which is what our resort or family does we take care of each other so, Erica, do you know what? Did Debbie tell you what time you need to be there tomorrow? Told me 9 o'clock. Okay, because I'm wondering what time I need to be there, so I won't be able to help a whole lot, well, but I can do we'll some. We'll both be there at the same time. All right. <laughs> okay, so that's basically it for the collective goals. All right. Motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed?